hear the whistle blow a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles. A hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles. You can hear the whistle blow. A hundred miles.
What shall we say? I'm not afraid, no, no. I'm not afraid, no, no. I'm not afraid, no, no. Whom shall I fear? Jesus is for me, tell me. Well, what shall we say? I'm not afraid, no, no. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid, no, no. What can separate you from the love of God? Can nothing shall separate me, no, no, from the love of God? Shall famine separate you from the love of God? No, nothing separate me, no. Of God is shouted out. I'm not afraid. No. Whom shall I fear? If Jesus is for me, tell me. What shall we say to these things? Well, what shall we say? I'm not afraid. No, no. I'm not afraid, no, no. I'm not afraid anymore. What can separate you from the love of God? Nothing shall separate me, no, no. The persecution separate you from the sweet love of God. Tell me, choir, whoa. No, no nothing. nothing. Oh, no, no, no. I'm God is shouting out. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. No, no. Him shall I fear. Jesus is for me, tell me. What shall we say to these things? Well, what shall we say? What shall we say to these things? I'm not afraid, no, no. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid, no, no. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, no. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid any
wants to remind me that I'm a passing through instead of losing heaven. I must look to the day when there's no more dreaming. I'll be home at last. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, my home right up in the sky. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, my home right up in the sky. We thank God for that. That was really wonderful. I hope we are all looking forward to that city, that new Jerusalem. Um, I've been, I'm looking forward. I was actually having a conversation with somebody, some people today, and I said, well, if Jesus says, now is the time that I'm ready, and they just said to me, you're going nowhere. <laughs> um, you are all welcome to our evening service. And also to our webcast audience, a warm welcome to you as well. We are still in youth camp. We're having fun. We're enjoying it. And the Lord has been blessing us. We want to say thank God for the opening prelude that we had, the choir rendition, and also the beautiful quartet we've just had. We will continue now with our congregational singing. And our song leader tonight will be Susan. Please shine, so we should all know the song. After a brief introduction, we could try and do some harmonies like the girls did, but um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs>
few harmonies, so well done everyone. Um, the next song is going to be He Touched Me. And I pray that God touches everyone's lives today. And as we leave this youth camp, our lives will not be the same in Jesus' name. Um, if you want, you can stand up, but you can stay seated, it's up to you. You can rise if you want, or you can stay seated, it's up to you. Um, the next one will be Amazing Grace. My chains, my chains are gone. Amen. Hey. 
In Jesus' name, Lord, thank you for bringing us here tonight. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come here and experience your presence. Lord, as we come here and as we fellowship, we pray, Lord Jesus, that we'll not go back home empty, that we will come and get something that we came for. Lord Jesus, even if it's just a little bit of blessing, a little bit of grace, a little bit of more understanding, Lord, come down. For the people that are not saved, Lord Jesus, save them. For the people that are not sanctified, Lord, sanctify them. For the people that are not baptized, baptize them. Lord Jesus, whatever we need, in whatever manner we need it, Lord Jesus, just give it to us tonight. And bless us and allow us to remember this night for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray.
he's done for me. Um, I thank him especially for this youth camp because, I mean, I don't know, since the last year when I first got my baptism, oh, I, don't, I can't actually explain how much I've grown spiritually. Um, and I just can't thank God enough for how much he's revealed to me over the year. I realised, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but I think I've testified over the last three youth camps. Um, it's not that deep, but anyways. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I've grown so much, and I just thank God so much because he's revealed himself to me in different ways, in new ways. Like, I just, I just, I can't, like, now I can just, uh, God's love. I just can't thank him enough for his love. And from this testimony, I just really want to, you know, get across the fact that I think we all really need to take God serious tonight. Because um, I know we always come here, we all come here to have fun. Obviously, we want to have fun, we're youth. But at the end of the day, we're here to meet God. We really need to search for God tonight. I don't care, literally, I seriously, like, everybody needs to do something tonight. Whether you understood God more, amen. If you got, the, if you got your next experience, God bless you. Do you know what I mean? But we really can't just be using these things as just come in, having fun, and I'm going home. No, I'm sorry, this is a testimony, but <laughs> I'm preaching. <laughs> um, but yes, I just praise God um, for my life, and I praise God for all of you guys' lives, and I just pray that he will really use all of us seriously for his good will. Like, ah, Jesus. Anyways, <laughs> okay. But yeah. um, I just want to thank God for youth camp. Um, um, every youth camp it may, it allows me to reflect on my life, and um, I just want to thank God for the opportunity He gives me. Um, and also, I want to thank God for um, turn, um, for turning 18 yesterday. And um, yeah, thank you. I want to thank God tonight because of God's mercy towards me and the fact that I'm, even though I'm undeserving, God still blesses me and I thank God so much for that. Um, as you may know, I'm a solicitor and I qualified last year and um, since, I was, <laughs> since I was young, there's always one thing I wanted to do which was a childcare solicitor. I've always wanted to be a childcare solicitor and um, during my firm, I didn't have the opportunity to go into that. So when I qualified as a solicitor, I said, okay, I'm going to take a huge pay cut. I'm even going to drop in terms of my qualification to get experience in a field that I wanted to. People were like, why would you do that? That's crazy. But I thought, do you know what? I'm passionate about this. So then we just do it. So I did so. <laughs> so, I did so and um, six months down the line, there was an opportunity that came up. I deleted the email. So I didn't even read the email. I deleted it. My friend came to show me, ah, Susan, come and see there's job. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. But I didn't want to apply. So I chose not to apply. And then even after that, people were like, why don't you apply? I was like, no, I'm not ready for a solicitor position. I'm just learning this area of the law. Let me just leave it. And I now had an appraisal with my supervisor and I was trying to leave Reading at this point. So I was trying to give her stories for why I wanted to leave. She goes, okay, I'll speak to the boss lady. The boss lady now came back and said, apply for that position that I didn't want. I said, oh God, what is this? <laughs> Let me just go in peace. So I applied for the job and somehow, even though in my interview, I wasn't making much sense as usual. And I was sitting there like, God, why am I here? But I just said, let me just do it. And I was just giggling to myself when I left. And um, they called me in last week and they were like, you got the job. I said, oh God. <laughs> I just want to thank God for like, just even though I just, when I was there, I was like, God, I don't deserve this, but yet you still love me enough. Yet you see so much in me that I don't see in myself. And you keep pushing me and pushing me. And I'm just like, you know what? Thank you, God. So um, sometimes even though we feel like we don't deserve anything or we can't achieve something, God, God, God has got us and he knows the plans and purposes that he has for us. And he knows where he wants to put you. So wherever you are, wherever God has placed you, if you don't feel equipped, know that God has placed within you the things you need in that position. I just want to thank God for that. And I hope that everyone today is blessed in Jesus' name. I don't know what's happening to the boys tonight, but I want to praise God for he is real. Amen. I just want to thank God because um, uh, I know you guys have heard this story, but I have to tell it because it's my story. Yes, the Lord was merciful to me at the age of 16. You know, uh, I, I, that started knocking on my heart. Lost my elder brother at the age of 16. Lost my father in an accident in the, at the age of 17. My mom commits suicide at the age of 18. My life is in a total mess. And here comes God on the scene. Hand picks me out, baths me up with his salvation, 
and decides to use me. This is the thing. Because in, in the state I was, it should have been over. But whenever God steps into the scene, it is never over. It's not over until it's over. So I really thank God. Why I really want to thank God also tonight is because when I came to this country, I came with high expectations. I had my qualifications in fine art from Nigeria, but the cultural shock in the UK, it threw me into depression. For four years, I could hardly do anything artistic. But God decided to reward the years that the canker worm had eaten. And at last year when we had youth camp, we were talking about dream big. The 25th of April was the first time, you know, God would give me opportunity to be on, I call it Prime TV, BBC One, the one show in this country. Now, 11 times on Tuesday will be probably the 12th time that I will be showcased. And this is very rare because people would say, you're black, you're doing arts, no chance. But with God, it is possible. So I just want to thank God. And my heart goes out to every young person here because I know the plans he has for you are not of evil, but he's there to give you an expected end. And it doesn't end here, it ends in heaven. So we're still going to have a more good time. May God accept my thanks. God so much um, for how he's been protecting me. Um, I got a, well, it's not really that new anymore, but I got a job last year, January, and it was outside London. And so um, later on last year, I started driving to work, and I just want to thank God for all the crazy situations that he saved me out of, where I see cars coming out of all kinds of directions in the middle of the countryside, in darkness, in whatever, in snow. God has always been protecting me, and I'm really thankful that. I'm also really thankful because I remember a couple of years ago, I think, I remember praying about a job and, and testifying about a job and how God has done so much for me. And I, and I remember saying, oh, God will give me that job, definitely. And he did, he did give me that. But then God has just kept on taking me to places where like I didn't even expect I would be. So in my current job, I remember applying for it, thinking I don't really have the qualifications for what they've said for this, but I'm just going to apply for it anyway. And I knew at that time, I remember saying categorically, you know, God, the deadline is coming up. I have a month left and you better answer my prayer. And I remember having a chat with him and God just did it in such a way. At the time, we had so many like family problems and there were a lot of deaths in the family. And at the same time, God was just you know, just kind of giving me little glimpses of hope through like, I just got an interview, an email saying, oh, you're called to interview. And then within two days, they were like, you got the job with a pay rise, etc." And I was just like, thank you so much. So I just thanking God so much for how he's been continuously taking care of me. He's been protecting me when I don't even realize it. There are times where and one time we were meant to go to church and I was really complaining actually at home. I remember I was like, we're so late, like we're late, we're late, we're late. And I was like, this is so bad. How can we be late? And I remember at the time I got into my car and I was like, I'm, I'm going and leaving everybody behind. I need to get to church on time. And then all of a sudden I looked at my dress and it just, I just saw like a white stain. And I was like, are you kidding me? So I had to go upstairs and change. And I was like, I can't believe it. So now I'm even going to be later. And what I didn't realize was on the way at the time that we would have been there, there was a massive accident and people died died and I was just like this is so God because I later looked at the clothes that I saw the white stain and there was no white stain and I was like I don't understand where is the stain that I saw before and I just really thank God so much because I just know that God has been protecting me when I don't even realize it. So you, you, you're missing accidents and God is just stopping you. So you're complaining, thinking you're late, but actually it was God's purpose for you. So I'm just thanking God for all the protection that I know of and the protection that I don't even know of. So I just want to thank God's name. Amen. Um, I came to this country some three years ago to study. And um, just like Kubanji said, the culture, <laughs> you know, contrast is a lot, you know, from Nigeria, the way we learn is completely different. It's good because I learned how to play piano in Nigeria. My dad taught me, I had a diploma in music before coming. So then I got here and it was very difficult. It was very difficult because I couldn't really, you know, it's very hard to learn, to, to, to study in a language that isn't your mother tongue, mother tongue, if that makes sense. Because, I mean, if you taught me in Yoruba language, my dad taught me how to play in Yoruba language, and it worked, do you know what I mean? But, so coming here, English is my first language, it was really, really hard. 
I understand how to speak and I understand how to listen, but it was difficult because I had to learn advanced things. So I remember um, going down my news um, in class, not, not in presence of anyone because I couldn't do that in presence. I just couldn't, it's just, just too weird, but I like to do it in secret. So e each time the student went out for like break, coffee break, I just knelt down at the your piano stool and I said, God, please, I want you to help me. I really want you to help me. And God doesn't answer in like fireworks and stuff. He just, God just carries on with his plan, you know. And then at the end of the day, I was able to complete all my tasks, you know. And one thing that means a lot to me is that God loves everybody, you know, but he loves me to the extent that he has, encrypt my, he has encrypted my life, meaning that I personally can't do some things I want to do. I can't. It's not even possible. He's not giving me the options because he can't afford to make me make any mistakes, you know. I have uh, a lot of weaknesses, but you wouldn't know because God has successfully packaged me in a way that it makes me look really amazing. And at the end of the day, I know a lot about me. Uncle Ola can testify because I live with him. I make a lot of mistakes. So, I mean, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near perfect. So, yeah, um, I'll be going back to Nigeria because I have to. So, and I can say that I've learned a lot from, like, UK. You know, it's, when I came here, my mentality was completely different. And I came with a completely open mind. You know, I learned a lot of things. I suffered some things. And God loves me so much, and he still does. So, yeah, um, I just want to encourage you tonight that you need to tell God something. You need to pray to God and tell him that you need to force me to do your will. I act because God wouldn't do that because he, he didn't create man to force man. You know, you have to ask him. So I ask God to force me to do his will. Make me, stop me from going to a place you don't want me to be. Don't make me play a song you don't want me to play. And it has worked because God actually forces me, you know. It doesn't allow me to do things. And that is why I've been, I'm like this. I prayed to God that I wanted to have a first class in uh, uh, my first degree, you know. And I, I told God that, God, if I have a first class, I won't be proud. I'll be humble because at the end of the day, I know my weaknesses. So, and God gave me a first class. <laughs> Give me first class, and I when I told my mom, she was she was too happy because as a kid I wasn't very smart, you know. I I repeated two classes in Nigeria back then, so the moment I started learning music, God op opened my brain, and up till now I can say that God has done a lot for me. <laughs> God bless you. I had done like maybe two years ago about because in my school it's a very white and like atheist school kind of thing. And I always prayed for someone who, was, who would understand me and someone who believed in God as well. And I was just thinking, I was like, last year my friend suddenly said, oh, I'm a Christian now. And I was like, I was just totally just like distraught by it. And it really helped because sometimes now we talk to each other and we understand what, like, we, what we do to, with each other. And it's like when other people are around and be like, oh, God's not real, God's not real. We, we're, both, we're both together and we're both like on the same wavelength and it really does like help my heart so much. Me a part-time job. Yeah, yeah I just want to thank God for saving and sanctifying me and giving me a part-time job. And I've been praying for a job for the last seven years, well, six and a half years, and nothing seems to like, show up. So I'm just thanking God for it. Amen. I want to thank God that I'm here and I'm alive today. I want to thank God that he kind of reveals himself in situations that, that I may not understand. For example, like things that you never get, like burdens, you find a blessing out of them. And when I complain, when I go through stuff like that, I'm just thinking, Lord, why, why am I here? Why am I, in, why am I in this place? But if I'd never gone through stuff like that, I would have never found a blessing. I want to thank God for that. And please pray that I pass my exams. So lots of things in my life. Um, one day, my mum woke up, woke up early, and she had to take the bus, I mean, the tram to her work in London, and something was just up, so she decided not to go, and then she got lots of phone calls saying if she was all right, because the tram she was supposed to take crashed, and only a few people survived, and 
only a few people survived and God has just been protecting my family because if my mum would have died then I would have had to live my, with my dad. We would have to sold the house and there would have just been so much commotion. So I just thank God that he's been protecting all of us. About my friends, when I was at Heath Camp, um, I had some great time with some friends, and then I remember thinking, oh, I wish, I wish there was like a prayer group we had or something where we can, and I had a few people in mind, and I was like, I wish we had something that we could, we could have together, and not knowing that God has seen my desire. And then a few months down the line, that group is formed, and I just thank God because like we have prayer meetings on Sundays, and we call each other and encourage each other in the Lord, and um, being a Christian is hard, but when you have friends who are sending Bible texts, Bible verses daily, or always talking about passage, or encouraging each other, and we can talk about our most intimate burdens and stuff and pray together, it's powerful. It, heal, it keeps you grounded. And I just really thank God for that, and I just pray that God adds more, and adds more to your life. Um. I really want to thank God, especially um, for my job. Um, I really recently left my previous job um, in August, um, and since then I had been applying and applying for jobs. Nothing came. My friends would get a job. Nothing came. Um, there'll be times I'd be crying, everything, but nothing came. Um, but it was only till last month where I literally I got a job within a week, and I was so grateful to God, and I just want to honor my promise to him. So. <laughs> I want to thank God because at the right time, God cornered me up. He saved my soul. I own it all to him. He sanctified me. He baptized me. And furthermore, he brought me into this country about five years ago. After my masters, everything seems blocked. But I serve a God who does break protocols. While I was going through immigration stages and things that were very, things are very hard and very difficult during that time, the only person I met was Jesus. I never go to man for help. Because I know sometimes man can help, but God never fail. He gave me a job when I was going through immigration problem, when my application was refused, and I had no paper in the home office. And the job was actually one year. I started the job without no paper. And the reason why I got the job, I don't know. But to cut the long story short, because I did open up in my place of work that I had no paper. And fortunately for me, the head of the department was actually born in my country. He was born in Gabon. And he said, because you open up and you are a Christian, he did it for me and they gave me the sponsorship. And I don't know what you might be going through here. If you're thinking it's not possible, it is possible. Yes. I went back to basics. And I can tell you, though the journey is not smooth, but if you go back to that basics, it's surely going to do it. Amen. God bless you. domain to try to tell this lips can only start is big enough to rule this mighty universe yet small enough to live within my heart Though man may strive To go beyond the rape of space To work beyond the distance 
shining star these worlds are room so small within my master's house the open sky but the portion of his yeah how big is god how big and wide is vast domain to try to turn these lips can only start He's big enough to rule this mighty universe, yet small enough to live within my heart. As winter's tune may cause the tiny say to form. To lie asleep to wait by some must rain the heart grown cold we warm and trod with life anew the master's touch will bring the glow again how big is God, how big and wide is vast domain To try to tell these lips can only start He's big enough to rule this mighty universe Yet small enough to live within my heart. go beyond the reap of space to walk beyond the distant shining stars these words are room so small within my master's house the hope and skies for the passion of his yard. How big is God? How big and wide is vast domain to try to tell these lips can only start. He's big enough to rule this mighty universe yet small enough to live within my heart how big is god how big and wide is vast domain to try to tell these lips can only start is big enough to rule this mighty universe yet small enough to live within 
my heart how big is God how big is God Amen God is so big so mighty that he made us specially for his pleasure, for his purpose. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 1. As we're thinking about back to basics, I'm taking you back to the beginning, how it all began. It says Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. We see there that God spoke this world into existence, and he spoke many things into existence. But he took time to make man. He says, let us make man in our own image. I'm going to read it. Verse, um, same chapter, verse 27. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 31 it says, and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were of the sixth day. It says, and God saw everything that he made. And behold, it was very good. God made each and every one of you. And he was proud to make you. Young people need to remember that God loves you. There are many kinds of love in this world. False love. People can tell you, yes, I love you. Ladies, guys, they tell you. You're looking fine today, but they're looking for something, aren't they? Okay, yes, it's true, but then guys, there are girls who are looking for your trouble. They will walk past you, swinging their hips. That special walk that will get your attention, and if you're not careful, if you don't hold yourself, you will fall. But do you know who the creator of that is? That was the devil. God created man for his pleasure, for his purpose, to have sweet communion with man. But the devil wasn't happy. He said, oh, no, 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 no. If I am not enjoying heaven, God bless you, we want to get to heaven, don't we? If I'm not enjoying heaven, these people are not going to enjoy heaven. So he decided, I'm going to do something. And he came and destroyed God's perfect plan. Well, he thought he did, but God knew. God knew. You know, sometimes in our lives, things don't always go quite the way we expect it. But God knows. God sees. He is the beginning and the end. He knows what has been, what is, and what will be. Yes. He has perfect control yes. because he is a very big God. Yes. So, the devil wanted to cause problem for us. And you know how he did that? He deceived man, deceived the woman, and she gave it to her husband and sin entered. That's what happened at the beginning. But that was not the intention. God's plan was to have fellowship with man. But God foreknew and sent a greater. We know that through man sin came, but through Jesus Christ, hope was born. Amen. Life, that death that the devil thought he had brought, Jesus turned it around Amen. and has brought life to us all. Amen. We're going to have a look at just a couple of examples 
But before that, um, I'm going to ask Rutimi to come forward, please. Okay. Reason why I asked Rutimi to come forward um, is obviously he goes to the gym and does a lot of things, you know. You can tell I don't go to the gym, so. But there's a cup, yes? Okay. Don't be scared. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm just going to pour some water into this cup. And just about that. So, how heavy is that cup of water? How heavy do you think it is? <laughs> I don't know. One kg. That's a bit. Mm, no, not this cup of water. Oh no, zero, zero point something. I guess. Zero point something. What about you guys? How 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 heavy do you think that is? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's making you think. Okay, that's fine. But if Rotomi holds it for one minute and puts it down, it's the weight it is, isn't it? Say an ounce. If he holds it for 10 minutes, it's still an ounce. But he's been holding it for 10 minutes. His arm will be aching. If he holds it for an hour, it's still an ounce. If he holds it for the whole day, his arm would be numb, wasn't it? He won't have no feeling, but the cup is still the same. And you know what the devil does? Sin. No matter what sin it is, it's still the sin before the Lord. It's how long are you holding it? Are you holding? How long are you holding your sin for? How long? The topic for tonight is just let it go. That's, that's the whole purpose. We know that the devil planned evil against us, but God is telling us, let it go. God wants you to... Thank you very much. God wants you, irrespective... You know, sometimes when people tell lies, they say, it's a little white lie. It's nothing. But before God, sin is sin. Irrespective of what it is. I know some people may question it. Say, if somebody kills... It, mm, that one's more deeper than the, somebody who told a lie. But before God, sin is sin. Do you know why? Because when Jesus Christ was on the cross, said God turned his back on his son because of sin, because God is holy. He can't behold sin, irrespective of how we humanly measure it. Sin is sin. It depends on how long you hold it. If you hold sin in your heart for a day and you let it go, praise God, you'll be fine. Amen. But if you hold it for two days, that same sin, it could be a lie. It'll start to eat away at you. You hold it for two weeks. You hold it for a month. You hold it for a year. Soon you become so numb that you can't feel anything. And that was the devil's intention. That man can have no feeling. No feeling at all. I'm sure some of you who, maybe perhaps you've slept wrong and you may have slept on your arm and you felt when the next morning you've woken up and your arm is numb and, you know, there's no feeling in there. So imagine that spiritually. How numb the devil wanted us to be. But that's not the plan of God. God's telling us it is time to let it go. Amen. It's time to drop that sin. Yeah. It's time to drop that stress. Perhaps some of you are, will be doing exams. And I know some people are very intense. They're very stressed. They you know, are very diligent in they want to pass and everything else. But then sometimes it's not, all that stress is not good for you. In your physical body, in your mind. God says, let it go. We're going to talk to the Lord about it. We're going to tell him, God, that exam, it's in your hand. Yeah. That exam, you're going to write it. Yeah. That exam, you're going to mark it. Yeah. And I will pass. Yeah. Perhaps it's your job. Could be stressful. Whatever it may be, that job, you're going to talk to God about it. You're going to lay it down at the cross and say, Lord, take control. And tell God, you are the one in charge. You have to just take control. I'll give you my personal testimony. Um, when I finished my degree, 
some years ago. Ooh, I'm very old now. Um, 2000 and, ooh, 2004. Uh, no, 2002. No, I can't count. <laughs> It's, okay, 2002 is when I finished my first degree, and it's for two years I didn't get, have a job. It was, I think most of you are so used to that catch-22 thing. Yes, you're very good, but you don't have the experience. But then you're thinking, okay, if you don't give me a job, how do I get the experience? But you know, in that time, that two years, God taught me a lot to wait on him and to trust him. And it's, I can count now, it was the 19th of April, 2004, and it's exactly 13 years when I got my first job. And I'm still in that job up to now. And God has been good. I think there have been times, there have been ups and downs, but God has taught me to trust Him. There have been days... And times I'm thinking, God, I'm, I'm tired. This is just too much. But you know, God is good. God is amazing. I'll give you another example. Um, some of you know, some of you don't know. Um, a few weeks ago, um, just before the major incident that happened in London on the Wednesday, when, you know, the sad event happened in London where somebody was killed some people and things like running people over on the bridge the day before I'd finished work so late and you would not have I would not have ever thought I've lived in Peckham all my life I've never ever been robbed in my life but that day I was in a different area I got robbed by five young men in their motorbikes they took my bag they took everything they took Literally, I only had my car keys in my hand. And in my thoughts, in my mind, I was thinking, I looked up, I was almost voiced it out to say, God, why did you let this happen? But I thought, you know what? Whether saint or sinner, we all see the sun. We all see the rain. We all, you know, go in, go out. And it happens. But, you know, the devil wanted that to discourage me, to break me down. Because obviously that night, I think, I had probably about two hours sleep. My mind was replaying the event, the moment of how it happened. But despite all that stress that week, it happened on the Tuesday. Then on the Friday, even before the Friday, that very night, I needed to cancel my cards, cancel this, do that. And the strangest thing is, my car had literally run out of petrol as well. I was just on the last bit, and I have a company card, which a uh, fuel card that you use at the pet filling, and I didn't have that. I didn't have a card, I didn't have anything. I was thinking, hmm, no money, no phones, nothing. What am I going to do? I got home. To my surprise, in trying to look for things to try and cancel my cards, I found my... Um, driving license, the paper form, see, I told you I'm old, the paper form, um, where, and you, to my surprise, you would not believe what I found in that. I found 90 pounds cash. I'm telling you, 90 pounds, I didn't even think it was, I didn't know that was even there. I found 90 pounds cash in there. So that evening, God just helped me to settle. And just not just that, by the Friday, my boss called me, and said, oh, we're looking to split the division and we want you to head one side. So, I, so can you, you can't imagine how I was feeling. I, don't, I didn't know what to say. They said, have the weekend to think about it. And I was still thinking in my head, okay, all that has happened during the week. And then Friday, they said they want me to head a department. Huh. I said, okay, um, I'll think about it. I said, God, what do I do? I don't see myself as anything, as anything. Yes, but you know what? God has been good. Yeah. What the devil thought he was going to totally disorganize my life, disor totally disorientate me, 
God turned it around. Amen. And, you know, I was feeling still numb because of the shock of what had happened. But I had to say, God, you know, those young men, you know who they are, where they are. I just commit them into your hands Amen. and just take care of them in whatever way. Meet them wherever they are, not because for me, but so that they will know that you are God, Amen. that they will have an encounter with you, Amen. their creator, and that they would change their lives to become better young men in society, better young men for Christ. So, not just that. So I took the position. I, can't, I don't know how to thank God because I'm not worthy at all. I took the position. Okay, I told them on Monday, fine, I'll take it. I'll help. I'll do my bit. Following day, Tuesday, the same boss said, okay, because you've taken that position, we've increased your salary. He says, that is just to say thank you for taking the position. But in July, your normal sal the no we normally have a salary increase for promotions, you're going to get that in July. And then not just that, I'm still shocked. <laughs> By October, they will give me another promotion to, then I will become a senior quantity surveyor. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I just don't know what to say. T to be honest, I'm the most unworthiest person of all. Seriously, I'm not just saying it because I, I have to say it because Brad Isaac is here. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I am the most unworthiest person because I feel I don't serve God enough. Yes, I run around and do youth things and all these other things, but like what we've learned, it's all about what you do in secret. Your time that you spent with the Lord. And I haven't been spending enough time with the Lord, and that, that's the truth. I'm not making it up. But, you know, in everything, one thing I am grateful to God for, that even when life hits you hard. I can always go to God and even if I don't have the words to say and I cry, I can lay it down. I can just let it go and say, God, just take it. Because I have no strength, no power to do any of this. You know, Brother Isaac talked about 17 years being our um, pastor, district superintendent. It's been seven years that I'm the youth leader here. And, just, and that year, God helped me. I, do you know why? I just, 2010, I took on the leadership, not knowing what was ahead. By November of that year, my dad died. And it was like, hmm. so you're telling me I should serve you, but at the same time, you've taken my dad. What do you want me to do? But God's grace, Amen. his mercy has sustained me, Amen. has kept me, not because I am anything at all, but because of his love, yes. his care. Yes. And that's what God has in store for each and every one of us. I don't know what you came for, for this camp meeting, for this youth camp. I know some of us, we've come to meet friends, which is good. That's beautiful, because some of us, we don't see each other that often. But there is more to it than just that. We've come to have an encounter with the Lord. We've come to meet our maker. If you think maybe perhaps the things you've done is too big, there is nothing too awful that God cannot forgive. Look at the thief on the cross. There was two of them. One on the left, where's my left? Okay, one on the left, one on the right. But despite it all, only one entered heaven. Why? One was too proud to see his sin, to see himself as he was before his maker. The other said, Lord, remember me. Even if it's just those words, and you, have nothing, you don't know what else to say, just say, God, remember me. I tell you, those words are powerful. Yeah. That thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me. And God did not just remember him. He said, this day, this day, Amen. you will enter into my kingdom. 
How about the publican? He went to the temple to pray. The Pharisee was there also. He was proud. I do this. God, I've done this. God, I, I give to the poor. I serve. I do this. I do that. But the publican, he saw himself as he was. He said in the Bible, I'll read it for you. In Luke chapter 18, verse 9, it says, sorry, I'll take it from 10, it says, two men went into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, as other men are, exhorters, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. We want to drop such an attitude. Mm -hmm. We want to drop such a character. We don't want to be like this Pharisee. We want the attitude of this publican. Yeah. It says, and the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up as much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. It says, I tell you, this man went home. This man went down to his house justified. Pharisee went home just as he came. But we're not here to do that. No. We're, we're going to go home to our various places after an encounter with the Lord. Amen. We're going to go home changed. We're going to go home renewed. Amen. Whether you're saved, not saved, you need an encounter with the Lord. Yes. God is no respecter of person. No matter how many years, we all need a touch from the Lord. Yes. We need to let go of everything that this world has been placing on us. The world wants to fit us into a box that you have to be like this. No. God has given us freedom. We have freedom in Christ. Freedom, liberty in Christ to be who God created all of us to be. We are all different. Our faces are different. You can have siblings, but they're still very different. You can have twins, identical as much as they can be, but they're still very different. Yes. And God has something unique. He's planted something unique in us. All I can ask is that young people, this is your moment. Mm -hmm. God's right here. Yes. With open arms, he's telling you, say, come as you are. He will take you. Man can decide and choose, mm, I'm not sure about you, but I'll take you. But God doesn't look at that. No. God takes everybody on the same level playing field. Amen. Are you ready? Right now, to let it go. It's time, even now, to have your conversation with the Lord. Yeah. To tell God, Lord, here I am. Remember me. If that's all you can say, God, remember me. Yeah. I tell you, God will remember you. Amen. The altars are open. God will remember you. Amen. Come forward. Don't look at anybody else. This is your time, your moment, your encounter with the Lord. It's time for you to give yourself, your heart to the Lord. Whatever may be your situation, your problem, God is able, God is ready to sort you out God will bless you come forward the Lord will bless you
thank you for this night we just praise you ahead of time that we thank you for the souls that will join your kingdom tonight we thank you for those who we will rejoice with tonight we thank you for those whose destiny will be changed tonight we thank God for those whose eternity will be changed tonight oh glory be to God we just say thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.